Greetings! We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the advanced ways we might want to use object-oriented programming in the real world. So we've seen that we can access and modify attributes directly from a class. As you can see here, we can say car.make equals Toyota. Very easily we can change the make of the class. Not a problem. However, when we're working in really large pieces of software with lots of programmers, this technique can cause a lot of problems. So just to give you a sense of scale, like why is this even necessary? Well, imagine that we're looking at different pieces of software. So your homework, let's say assignment nine, just kind of pick one at random, give or take, maybe it's 250 lines of code. That, that's a fair amount, you know, that's a good, it's a good challenge. But when we look at software that's built by hundreds of people, maybe even on many different countries, it gives you a sense of scale. iPhone app might be 50,000 lines of code. Google Chrome, 6.7 million lines of code. Kind of keep going through all these places and you can see that looking at all the Google software, so Maps and YouTube and um, Google Drive and all those things, it might be 2 billion lines of code. So when we think about that many lines of code, that many variables, that many programmers, maybe even written over decades, we need to be able to have really clear boundaries about what code can be modified in what circumstance or people might accidentally overwrite pieces of data that they don't want to change intentionally. And that's where some of these object-oriented protections come in. So one way we could protect attributes, right, if we look at this example, if we're using our vehicle class, if I were to just say car.mpg, it'll print out zero, which is fine. But what if I say car.mpg equals negative 100? Should this be okay? Does it make any sense for a car to have negative miles per gallon? I mean, it'd be nice, but no, probably doesn't make sense. So how do we prevent this? Well, one way to do it is we can basically say, you know what, instead of changing an attribute directly, what we're going to do is we're going to provide a method that the user has to use to change the value, and then we can provide some logic, right? So if the method is used, we'll be able to do error checking to make sure that the values are correct. Now, we sometimes call this a set method, or a setter, or a mutator, meaning we are setting the value of a variable. Now, these are pretty standard. They'll usually look something like set attribute, and then self is obviously there, and then we have the new value you want to change. Um, that's pretty much standard, although obviously there's lots of variations, but the most simple level of a set attribute or a set method um, will look like this. It's not going to return anything either. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go. We've got this function, set mpg, and see what we're doing here? We're saying, okay, if the mpg is greater than or equal to zero, we'll let you change it. If it's not, meaning it would be negative, we won't allow it. So now if we run this code below and we say car one at set mpg negative 18, it's not gonna change the miles per gallon. It's gonna make it the same as it was, which in this case is zero. Uh, and then it's gonna print out a message saying invalid. So we've been able to add some functionality to make sure that we get good values. Whereas if we said set mpg23, that's fine. We'll allow that to, to process that. So this is an example of a set method or a setter. Now we can also provide methods to access attributes. And you might say, well, okay, maybe the setter is useful, but why would we need to access attributes through a method? Well, sometimes I can actually really simplify the process in addition to providing a concept of privacy, which is not something we really get into in this, uh, in this lecture, but that's another useful example. So let's look, at, look here. So imagine that we have this object, right, this Kiwi object, and we have some, some facts about the Kiwi, right? So we can see that we've got how much vitamin C it has, how much vitamin A, and those are all stored in a, in a list, okay? So this is, this is our fruit class with the Kiwi object. Now, how do we access how much vitamin A and vitamin C that there is? So we could say, you know, print kiwi dot nutrition list bracket one and use that to be vitamin A. Okay, I get, that's fine, I guess. You just have to keep track of bracket one, you know, in index position one is vitamin A. It's not, it's not so bad, but it could be a little bit time consuming if we had lots of values in this list. So what, though, do we do 
if you give a value that doesn't exist, like nutritionist bracket two. Well, it's gonna crash, right? Because that value doesn't exist. So what we could do is instead of providing accessing the list directly, we could provide a method that allows us to process and get that data, and it also prevents crashing. So this could make sure the values exist. It also makes our code easier to read, more self-explanatory. So these methods, by the way, are often called a get method or a getter or an accessor because you are getting a value. Now the format of these often looks like get attribute. It just returns the attribute. There's no parameters, although there could be. Typically, just return something. So here's an example. Let's say that we have a method called get nutrition, and let's see what it does. It basically just goes through our values and says if you put in in here, right? So down over here with our parameter vitamin A, it's going to use some some branching logic to say, oh, vitamin A actually means parameter, uh, sorry, index one. And so what is going to happen is what if you put in, if you type in fiber, it's just going to say zero, which in our plan here is correct, if not nutritionally, probably inaccurate. So by doing this, we have written a method that won't crash if you enter the wrong value. If you enter something that doesn't have, just give you zero. And that shows you kind of the advantage of doing something like this.